<laughs> um, uh, and then we're going to go to, you can't drink Barossa without having some Shiraz. Ah, absolutely not. And, um, so a couple of different expressions here. So uh, the 11th hour, a second one, been making since 2001 vintage. Um, yep. It's 11th okay. hour refers to, uh, in 2001, 2000 made Grenache, 2001, yep. there was a vineyard being pulled out that wasn't being economical for a friend. Yep. Um, they're pulling it out to replant it with Shiraz to get a bigger yield. Yep. And um, at the last minute, at the 11th hour, we drove over the hill and yep. there's a bulldozer pulling the vines out and we stopped them and said, we'll buy whatever's left as for yep. at a decent price. And yep. so that's where the yep. name comes from. It's just sort of working yeah, it older. Well, it wasn't exceptionally, I'm still old, and I was 60 odd years old back then. Um, and since then, we've been at the, I've been adding different vineyards from different places. This is mostly Grenock where my winery is, um, yep. and a bit of Stonewell as well. Yep. It's on this red ridge, western ridge, where they've got yep. heavy red clays that are exposed. Yep. So really constricting on the roots, um, but also retains yep. a bit of moisture. So you get low yields, but without the desiccating of fruit, you still get small berries, but they're still quite turgid when you pick them. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I really yeah. like that regard to that soil type. Um, that vineyard I pick across um, a few different weeks, so you get... Again, choices of blending, some spicy stuff yep. when it's early picked, some heavier stuff when it's later picked, and you still get yep. to blend it, even though it's mostly from the one vineyard. Um, this is a single vineyard of um, Grenoble, which is around the corner from where I am, um, on an eastern facing slope again. Um, just that I'd been driving past it for years and hadn't really noticed it, and then worked out who owned it, and um, just loved the side of it mostly, and, mm. and then just started making some wine from that as well. Um, and these, I mean, Shiraz, I do 100% descend. I don't, because yeah. I, I want to pick it early enough. Where we were talking about the skins before, the skins yeah. are still solid. I can yeah, get yeah. skin tannin from it, and then I'll leave it on skins for a lot longer. Yeah, so, uh, some people, some people have got this sort of thing. They say, oh, you know, they want to wait until their Shiraz and the Barossa goes baggy, you mm. know. And uh, when we say baggy, if you if you if you have a look at your table grapes or anything like that, if you if you leave a bunch out on a on a fruit bowl or whatever, eventually they start to shrivel up a little bit and, and mm. wrinkle a little bit. And that's sort of baggy fruit. Um, but, but very different from having turgid fruit. So you, you, you sort of at no risk there of, of, uh, of heading down that sort of jammy Jim, line but yeah. at, at, at all. So. I mean, that was the formula for making the high reviewed scored wines back in the yeah, early two thousands. Was to that was a sign to pick up that bag. Yep. You know. Yep. Somehow the alcohol will adjust itself in the future, and then yep. yeah, these big yep. muscular wines that everyone loves. Yeah, yeah. So um, somehow, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we go. Yeah, this is, I guess, from a, a, the difference in the blended wine. Um, really, really old neutral oak. Um, probably seven to ten day ferments on mm. these. Um, single vineyard. Um, I don't not necessarily new oak, but just sussing out some mates and buying, you know, two year old oak so you get them a little bit of that oak complementariness to it, but yep. just adding a bit of tannin to level it. But this one's on skins for uh, three, four weeks, a bit longer, so you're just getting a bit more more tannin to it as well. And there's a different fragrance to it. Well, that's and then again, that's on the. So there's a ripeness of Barossa Valley Shiraz. I always find the 11th hour is always on that bottom end of the ripeness yeah. of it. Um, it's still friendly and fruity, but it has a bit of, a, again, a coolness to it that I like. It's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? it it's, um, I think there's some, some varieties where there's, 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 there's sort of a, a window to pick it, and it's quite small. You get it wrong, and you, you, you grain yeah. or you, you yeah. overcook it. And there's other varieties where you've got to pick more of that window, and, 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 and other vineyards. Yeah. And so obviously with that 11-hour vineyard, you, you see you, you've got a bit, bit more flexibility um, yeah, in that, in that picking time. Yeah, yeah, and it rolls down the hill a little bit to the ground creek, so you sort of, it just don't, it actually don't happens naturally how it ripens, it ripens down the hill, yeah, and it gives you about a week or so between batches, depending on the year. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that, and that's got, again, the finest to me, and on the palate, and it's not overpowering no, as well, but it's still got flavour, which is, yeah. uh, you know, where even, a lot of times people look for Brussels Shiraz to just be impact. There's, 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 there's some density and there's some power to it, but it's not overbearing. Yeah. Um, so, and, and how do you describe your own JC zone uh, when you look at that, yeah, that Grenock subregion and what's going on with this? You know, you, you've gone from seven days to three weeks. That's a dramatic difference in the time of, you know, skin seven, contact yeah. and, uh, and those kind of things. Uh, uh, it's so still firming the same temperature and then it's just post Same temperature. And yeah, just leave it on, leave it on skins and yeah. it's just management afterwards just to keep it. Yeah. I mean, I tend to be relatively try and be as natural in the process as possible, but I mean, to keep, once it's finished fermenting, it has its own gas for a little while and you can close it, but. Yeah. After a while, you get a chuck a bit of CO2 on it just to keep the, the air out of it. But it does, to me, it looks a bit more open knit because of that um, time post uh, ferment. Um, it does pick up a slight amount of oxidation. Um, but the offset is that I think the tannin profile is more getting more mouth coating and a bit more, um, a bit more, a bit more evident, is what I would say for that. So, you know. It's funny, I mean, I was going to use the word, um, it's a bit, a bit more lifted. Uh, yeah. But, it's not really lifted in terms of being volatile or anything like that. It's lifted in terms of a sort of perfume and a fragrance that, that comes off it, which I'm, I'm sort of thinking is, is, is a thing that for me comes from post fermentation and yeah. You get those sort of violets coming through over time. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it certainly shows in that one. There is an immediate 
some more generosity and sort of a blossoming of the of the wine on the yes, nose straight away. Yeah, yeah. that's um, that's it, it's 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 quite inviting straight away. It's it's, it's interesting. There's a, a certain amount of a <laughs> Uh, a, a bipolar nature at the moment for me with the eleventh hour. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just waiting for it to come together just that little bit more. Eminently drinkable and beautiful Elevage, all, all, all set up and ready to go. Uh, yeah, twelve months. Yeah, so it's like a to, to really come in, come together, and, and, it, and that is being super, super critical. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like any day of the week, twice on Sunday, you just smash it, and, and uh, you'd be, 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 be Once again, that's another one for um, that. Um, yeah, it's opening time to close, you know, when you open it up, let it go in the glass, it just really comes around. And again, that's where with preference be if people buy this now, I say if you're gonna drink it, you've got to splash it around. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. or drink it over a week or so and just yeah. see how it looks. And I've got little decanter stickers about something yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. before I ship them. I'll yeah. be back on one on there. And um, but it makes, makes it sense. Because this is this is is like this, this fresh vibrant fruit character yeah. and then there's this underlying uh, darker character that's coming I think, yeah. A lot of people look at it when they open it and go for a Brussels strauss, it looks a little bit um, lean or skinny, and then that, the fruit just opens up as you go along as well. Not so, at all. Yeah. Well, not at all. I reckon that's people's there's, there's critique. Of fruit. Yeah. All, of, all of these wines have great depth and length. There's no no problem with that. There's just so, so it's 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 different. Yeah. 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 And, and, and enjoying them all differently. So, um, and, and I guess... I guess it's just uh, highlighting the beautiful thing about wine again, that uh, different, different vineyards... Within oh, regions, within some, some regions, uh, people taste it all as well, you know, and uh, it, it, all all have different characteristics. And I think you've harnessed a lot of those those beautifully. So, um, hey, thanks for sharing all of these. Um, 